We've put this tutorial together to help you understand a primary part of your upcoming hearing test, the audiogram. By the end of this tutorial, it's our goal that you will have a fuller understanding of how to read your audiogram and interpret what this could mean for you. Let's begin. Your audiologist will begin your hearing test by presenting tones of varying frequencies and loudness through insert earphones. While you are pressing a button to signal which tones you can hear, she will be marking the softest sounds heard on a graph that's called an audiogram. This graph is used to document how much hearing loss a person has, otherwise known as the degree of hearing loss, and what part of the ear has been damaged, referred to as the type of hearing loss. As you can see from this form, here at CEI, there are other tests your audiologist may complete for a well-rounded approach to your hearing health care. However, for now, we'll just focus on the audiogram. Let's look closer. Frequency is depicted along the x-axis, increasing from low to high frequencies from left to right. This is similar to how the keys of a piano go from low pitch to high pitch. For each frequency, we want to see how loud a sound must be for you to perceive it. We record loudness along the y-axis of the graph from 0 to 120 decibels, with 0 being very soft and 120 decibels being very loud. Once your audiologist has determined the softest sound you can hear, she will draw a circle on the audiogram to record that particular frequency. Each frequency is tested until the measurements are obtained across the audiogram. Once hearing acuity is measured for each frequency, the degree of hearing loss is known. Normal hearing is anything at or above 25 decibels. A mild hearing loss ranges from 30 to 35 dB. A moderate hearing loss is from 40 to 65 dB. A severe hearing loss is from 70 to 90. And a profound hearing loss is recorded at anything at or below 90 dB. So in this particular case, this person has normal hearing in the low frequencies, sloping to a profound loss in the high frequencies. This is how your audiologist will classify how much hearing loss you have, but let's look at it from a practical, everyday standpoint. So right now, you're looking at the frequencies where the vowels and consonants appear. If the softest sounds you can hear are below these letters, you will not be able to hear speech. Let's refer back to this example. So in this case, our person will be missing out on sounds such as the P, the H, the G, K, F, S, TH, and so forth. However, even a mild hearing loss can cause a person to miss 25 to 40 percent of speech as background noise and the speaker's distance from the listener can affect ability to understand. In general, Normal conversational speech occurs around 50 decibels, where a shout is recorded at 70 dB. Once the degree of hearing loss is known, your audiologist will determine the type of hearing loss. The type of hearing loss can answer many important questions, such as, can my hearing improve? What is causing my hearing loss? Would I benefit from hearing aids? And, is my hearing loss permanent? To understand the different types of hearing loss, let's first cover the basic anatomy of the hearing system. There are three parts to the ear, the outer, the middle, and the inner ear. The outer ear consists of the pinna, the ear canal, and the doorway to the next section, the tympanic membrane, or the eardrum. Sound is carried through the outer ear to the middle ear, which houses the three smallest bones of the human body, the malleus, the incus, and the stapes. 
these bones transmit sound to the inner ear where the hearing organ or cochlea is located. Tiny hair cells in the cochlea bend in response to sound, transmitting the signal to the auditory nerve which carries the sound to be received and translated by the brain. Hearing loss is caused when one or more of these sections are malformed or do not function correctly. A conductive hearing loss occurs when there has been damage to the outer or the middle ear. Conductive hearing loss is a bit like wearing earplugs. Your inner ear is working perfectly, but sound cannot get into the inner ear to be transmitted to the brain. Some medical reasons for conductive hearing loss include atresia and microsia, cholesteatomas, or ear infections, which are common in little children. A sensory neural hearing loss, also referred to as nerve damage, occurs when damage has occurred to the hearing organ or beyond. This is the type of hearing loss that can occur from excess noise exposure. Nerve damage is permanent. Therefore, people with this loss may find benefit from hearing aids or even a cochlear implant. Sometimes hearing loss can occur because of damage to both the inner and middle or outer ear. This type is called a mixed hearing loss. Type of hearing loss is tested by placing a bone oscillator on the forehead. This device bypasses the outer and middle ear, sending tones directly to the cochlea. Let's go back to our example. So, your audiologist will mark a red triangle at the softest sound that you respond at for each frequency, much like how the previous responses were obtained. If bone conduction responses are obtained within normal limits, a conductive hearing loss is documented. A sensory neural hearing loss is when responses recorded for both the inserts and the bone oscillator are at the same level. A mixed hearing loss is when responses are obtained at softer levels than those with the inserts, but responses are not within normal limits. By analyzing the type and degree of hearing loss, your audiologist and ENT will work together to determine the appropriate care for you, be it medical intervention or discussing amplification options such as hearing aids or FM systems.